You know, it's great to have a vision, and it is okay to live in the question, but at some point, you need to turn dreams into action. And for me, it is indeed an inspiration to see this young man take such a big step towards this mastermind program. Make no mistake, he has taken a risk this evening, and he will, of course, build a stronger for it. You know, risk is the currency of those that want to step out of mediocrity, who refuse to have limiting beliefs, for those who want to make a difference. Some 12 years or so ago, me and Lim Voy um, travelled together to Nigeria to try and make a difference. I was going to sort of um, big that up a little bit with me and Lim Voy, but our, our dad's here, we took us, so uh, I can't sort of, um, you know, pretend we sort of went alone. But um, there's some great people in this room. It wasn't long after our arrival before we were both well out of our comfort zones. Do you remember that, Lynn? Yeah. There's a gun involved in everything. <laughs> Lynn was like, what am I doing here? You know, Lagos is a hard place. Anyone who makes it from there to here has already taken some risks. I could never have guessed all that time ago that today I would be introducing the young man from that city on an evening like this. Not just as a member of my family, but as a man of passion, integrity, and unique ability. All of us need encouragement and inspiration. Often behind the top players in life is a coach keeping them on track. The relationship is key. Calvin is a man who has time for people, who is interested in your story and desires to join up with the journey. Don't mistake his humility for weakness. This is a strong man with a servant heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I commend him to you. I believe in him. An inspiration to me, Mr. Kelvin Inspires. Put your hands together. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the energy up here. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing today? You all doing good? When I say how are you doing, I want you to say I'm doing good and better than most. How are you doing today? Brilliant. Now, what well, my reason for being here right now, this is my show anyway, you know. <laughs> I was going to take a few minutes before we bring in our guest speaker to uh, talk about why we're doing what we're doing. I feel a bit very, you know, it's overwhelmed that this is happening tonight. This is my dream to see you here today. It is my dream and it's happening and you're part of it. You are part of it. I don't know what your dreams are. As this night begins to unfold, I want you to think about your dreams and your goals. And remember, you're, you, 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 you are the actor, the actress, the artist of your life. And you are playing a video every day, you walk around, whatever you do, you're playing a video about your life. And so you decide if your video is going to be a mega hit or a flap. Three quick things. As we listen to this, watch this video, most, a lot of people have probably seen it before, but I really want to say, I really want you to, to show it again because it encompasses the passion, the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Don't focus on where you start, just focus on where you're going. Never despise the days of little beginnings. And if you've got goals and dreams in here tonight, start anyhow. Start wherever you can. Just make sure you start. Start. Can we roll the video, please? What is your dream? What are your goals and aspirations in life? Now, perhaps you've tossed big dreams, great ideas, deep down into the ocean of your heart, and you've constantly rejected yourself. I'd like you to think about for a minute your goals and your dreams. If you're watching this video, I understand there could be two things going through your mind right now. One, who are you? 
to Why Should I Care? I am Kelvin Nuchin May for that. I'm a life coach and a speaker. Now, Kelvin Inspires is an initiative set up to inspire men and women, boys and girls who want to be inspired to achieve something more with their lives. Why should you care? According to recent research, 80% of people today work in jobs that they hate. And that's 8 out of 10 people hate their jobs. 60% of businesses fail in the first 5 years. And that's 6 out of 10 businesses fail. And the most shocking news currently released by the World Health Organization. A death suicide occurs every 40 seconds. Hmm. I've been there too. I've worked in jobs that I hated. I've worked in jobs that barely pay the bills. Now Kevin Inspires. Kevin Inspires is here to inspire men, women, boys and girls who want to be inspired to do more with their lives. And from time to time we aim to show stories, inspiring stories of people who have turned their circumstances around for the better. And we're talking about stories from the once unemployed to the employed now. Stories ranging from the stay-at-home moms who can share stories of raising kids. And from the men and women who have fought hand in hand against the clutches of cancer and are standing today. We want to share stories that can inspire people to succeed and for them to understand that in the struggle they are not alone. And that there are people today who are standing and making a difference with their lives. This is our goal, and this is my dream. What is yours? Introduce you to a man who's an inspiration to those who know him, a man of like passion, a man who has succeeded in and out of the pitch, a former defender for the Portsmouth Football Club. Pompey, come on. A former Premier League player, a member of the most excellent order of the British Empire, a sportsman turned motivational speaker, a father and a husband. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please all rise as I present to you the one of blessing for Lee Boy Primus. great to be here um, for Kelvin and, and what his dream is and his passion is and to be one of the first um, to be involved in it in, in this sort of evening is, is amazing and, um, and I've got so much time for Kelvin because I was speaking to uh, a couple of people earlier and I say I always say that for me I always like to see people give it a go because I really believe that's me but I'm just that little bit too scared to give it a go. I'm just that little bit too, or oh, what if it fails? You know, what if it doesn't work right? And, and so for Kelvin to do this, it's a huge risk, a huge risk, but wow. If you don't live it, if you don't try it, then when are you gonna try it? Who's gonna try it? Someone else will step into that place if you don't do that. So Kelvin, well done, and uh, you know, it's gonna be great. Kelvin's little talk at the beginning, that got me ready. I'm ready to go, man. I'm just going to give it a go. Kelvin, I'm ready. I'm inspired, man. So, but, you know, it, like I say, all the best and, and it's going to be an amazing future for you. Um, I'm going to share probably for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, about a little bit of my life journey. And, and it's really interesting because I say I like to see people give it a go. But then I, I reflect back on my own life and I gave it a go. You know, I, I really gave it the best I could possibly give it. And um, sometimes the rewards were there and sometimes they weren't. And, um, and I think part of everybody's journey are the, the good times and the bad times. 
and it's how we cope with the good times as well as the bad times. And, um, and I think for me, coming to Portsmouth to play football, my dream to play football was never to play in Portsmouth. That wasn't my dream. My dream was just to be a footballer. But when you achieve that and you go on to the next stage, well, I want to play for the best team, I want to play in the best league. You know, your, your targets change and your goals change, but along the way there's lots of, uh, of down times. And I think the football world has, a, has an image of being the, the most glamorous, the best thing ever, but behind the scenes it, is, it isn't great. It isn't great. And yeah, it's a lot to overcome. And one day I'll be able to share some stories about that. But I think tonight is about being prepared to put yourself on the line, to go the extra mile, because you don't know what could be achieved in your own lives. Um, just watching that DVD, like Kelvin said, that was a moment, you know, and there's lots of bits on there, scoring goals, tackles. I had to play the goals back a few times because I never scored many goals. So if you played it back a few times, at least, at least it looked like I scored a lot of goals, but <laughs> I didn't really score many goals. But, they, that was just a moment. It's like I'm watching somebody else because you can't live in that. You know, that, that there, that was great. That, that gave me some happy moments. But I can't live in that. That's gone. You know, that's over seven years ago, some of those, uh, some of those clips are from. That was good. That done, that done a job at that point. But now life has moved on. And it's moved on in a big way. But I'll share a little bit about where I came from. Uh, the, the, the journey of being a footballer and what's happening now because I think that's more important than that life of football. It's what's going on today. That's the, that's, the, that's the real deal. So I grew up in East London. I grew up in Stratford, East London. I lived in a high-rise block of flats, lived on the 17th floor of those flats. And where my flats were, were based, looked over East London, it looked across Essex and in the skyline was West Ham Football Club. And those floodlights used to you know, shine at night on a Tuesday. Most weekends, those lights would shine. And I was drawn to that. I was drawn to that. But I wasn't just drawn to those lights. I was drawn to the sport. But my dad, being from the Caribbean, like cricket, he tried to get me into cricket. But those little balls hurt you when they hit you, those little cricket balls. So I said, no, no to cricket. But, um, but I had this passion to be a footballer. And it all came alive because of one person. We all have to follow, like Kelvin said, we have to follow. Someone leads, we have to follow. You know, and this one person was a guy called Ricky Velia. Some of you will not even know who that is. And there might be a few football people that will know who he is. He scored a goal in a cup final. And that was when my life changed because I saw one guy do that and I thought, I can do that. If he can, so can I. I was already playing the image of me being a footballer as an eight-year-old in my mind. I'd already played that image. I didn't play on the football pitch. I played in the uh, corridor of my mum and dad's flat against my teddy bears. It was okay because I used to win. I used to win all my games when I played my teddy bears. But that was my Wembley. That was my football pitch. My mum and dad's corridor, my mum and dad's flat. That was my Wembley. But in my imagination, it was the best place ever. There was nobody, nobody could tell me that I wasn't going to be a footballer. Nobody at all. Because my imagination was saying, you can become this person. Okay, I had to have a bit of ability. I was pretty quick. I kicked the ball hard and I headed the ball. That was it, you know, not a lot of ability. I didn't have great skill. But I had enough that I knew that I could go on again. At 14, I decided to play professionally for a, a schoolboy team called Charlton. At 16, I got offered an apprenticeship, which would mean that I'd be playing football every day, but I was still a kid. But my dreams had changed by this point. Because I was playing football regularly, I knew the next stage for me was to be a professional. How was I going to be a professional? And it wasn't, again, about my ability, it was about my attitude. Because every single boy who was within that Charlton team, I think there was about 40 boys within that team, all wanted to be professionals. And at the end, after two years, only two boys got offered professional contracts, and I was one of the two. So, you know, it was always a hurdle, but I knew most of the people in that team were better than me. Most of them were. But I had a hunger, I had a desire to make it. I, had, I would do things on my own that people didn't know about. 
So I'd go running on my own, I'd go to the gym on my own, I'd, I'd do things that would make me better, but I'd do them quietly. Because I knew for me to get the, a, a little bit extra, a little bit better than the other guys, I had to do that bit more. I wasn't a natural footballer. My parents liked cricket. You know, my dad didn't really know what football was about. I didn't know what football was about. I still don't really know what football was about, you know, but I knew that for me to go on to the next level, it would mean I'd have to do that little bit extra. But who showed me to do that little bit extra? Who was the one that I looked at to say, that's what I need to do? It was another professional footballer. He wasn't my friend, but I saw him doing stuff and I thought, why does he do that? Why is he doing that? Everyone else has gone in from training, why is he doing that? But then I saw he was one of the better players and he, he went out and practiced that little bit more. You know, I was privileged to grow up in an area where there were some really good footballers that came from there. Um, you had Rio Ferdinand, David Beckham, Jermaine Defoe, John Terry. You had guys that have played the highest level of football, but the one guy who always said what he'd done after training made him the better player was David Beckham. Now, David Beckham is still known now, not even for football anymore, he's still known for what he'd done many, many years ago, but he's still somebody that's got a bit of profile. And I looked at guys like, I look at guys like that and I was thinking at the time, those bit, extra bits of training are gonna help me. So I started to do those extra bits of training. Did it bring me success for a small moment? Because at 20 years old, I was then told by the football club that they didn't want me anymore. And for me, that was the first time in my life I'd faced rejection. It was the first time in my life that the guy, the manager of the team, said to me that I wasn't good enough. He was like my father figure, because I knew if I pressed the manager that I'd be in the team. If the manager didn't put me in the team, then obviously the manager doesn't like me anymore. But for the manager to say he didn't want me, first form of rejection. And it hit me hard, it hit me really hard. Because I'd just become a dad, 20 years old, and just, Nathan was just born, he's 21 now, he's a little bit taller than me. Well, a lot taller than he do, yeah, he's a lot taller now. <laughs> just born, so I had these issues now. It wasn't just about Linvoy, it was about looking after my girlfriend, who's now my wife, my young son. I now had to, I had responsibility. <laughs> But also still, I wanted to play football because I had that as an eight-year-old. As an eight-year-old, I knew that's what I wanted to do, but how was I going to stay in football? How was I going to play football again? At the end of every season, over 900 footballers are told by their clubs, not wanted anymore. There'll be guys who are playing today or playing, played at the weekend who you will see in July who are unemployed. They could be playing in the Premier League, Champions League, they could be in League Two, unemployed. And how do you pick yourself up from that? I was in that position, but there was still a desire in me to make it, to, to go on and play football. So I went running on my own again, Trish with a stopwatch and a pram. You know, I was running around the field in, in East London just to try and keep myself fit and hope that someone would call me and ask me to come back and play some football at any level. I got that call and that was great, but I think for the next, from the age of 20 through to 28, 29, I played every football match with fear. Fear, and that restricted me. I wasn't living the life that I was created to live. I wasn't living it. Because I knew that if I played within myself, I couldn't fail. Because at least then I didn't put my whole body on the line. At least I didn't give it everything to be let down. I'd lost all hope in football because I'd been let down so many times by agents. Agents had taken money from me. People had abused my life, my wife's life. My wife was unwell. And, it, and my thought process was, well, what's life about? What is this about? Truly, if I'm doing the job I'm supposed to do, why am I not happy? Why am I living this life that feels lonely, feels isolated? Why am I living in that place? And then two people uh, introduced us to, to church. I became a Christian, my wife became a Christian, and our lives changed. Our, our, our real lives just had start, had now come to a place to start this journey to equip me to, to be the person I was supposed to be. 
I think the time, what we, we, we saw on the DVD, I think that time of, of playing with, in the Premier League, playing with Portsmouth and achieving great things, was, there was always a line, and some, there's some people in this room that have been on this journey with me and know the journey of Limboy through Portsmouth. It looks, again, all those highlights look great, I'm smiling, I'm doing the thing that I love, but there was a challenge every single day. The challenge I had to overcome was that manager of that team didn't really want Limboy to be the first choice didn't really expect Linvoy to play at that level. And because in the past, before I became a Christian, the fear that gripped me would have stopped me playing in the Premier League. The fear would have stopped me being the person I was supposed to be. But there was a different attitude. There was an attitude that I had vision for my life now. I had more vision for my life than I'd ever had before because I realised I was more than a footballer. You know, I don't know what jobs anybody does in here, but if your identity is wrapped up in the job that you do, you're gonna fail. You'll fail, guaranteed. Because when that job finishes, and you're trying to find your identity, your identity is in, for me, football. When football finishes, and I'm like, oh, I'm not a footballer anymore, who am I? Who? is Limboy, who, yeah, I was a, uh, yeah, I was a footballer, uh, uh, um, who am I? But because my identity wasn't wrapped up in football anymore, that I knew I was more than that, it gave me so much freedom. So when the challenges came in, I was able to hold on to the truth of who I was, to the truth of my life, to the truth of where I was going. And one of the visions I had, and this, this will, and I'm sure a lot of you will understand this, I had a vision as a 15 year old to start a charity. And I didn't know it was gonna be a charity. All I knew was that I wanted to give something back. If I ever made it as a professional footballer, I wanted to give something back. That's all I had. And at 29 years old, we started a charity called Faith in Football. And we just use football to engage with young people. We want the local church to engage with the community. So we just use football. But you know what we was able to do? We were able to get alongside young men and women and talk about hope for their lives. When Kelvin says we need to follow somebody, someone sets an example, then we do it. That's what was happening. With faith in football, that was what was happening. I knew I was a role model in some way. I didn't know how. Because if it was in my house, it would, you, you'd laugh because uh, you know, I, I do stupid things in, in, in the house. But I knew that the profile that I had as a footballer could be a, a positive influence. And because we were able to get alongside young people, we saw communities change. We saw communities change in front of our eyes. And it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't because of anything special that I'd done. All I ever done was turn up, the guys who would, would set everything up, get it all there, up and ready, I'd turn up and I'd say a few hellos, smile, pictures, sign a few autographs, that was it. But now we meet some of these kids that were with us, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and their lives, and they talk about different moments that happened on the nights when we run these football things. And we think, and I've, I had to think to myself, well, did that really happen? What? We, we said that to you. And, this, and that was your response. Because for us, it was just being positive in their lives. But it had such an effect for them going forward. What an amazing thing. When you talk about legacy, that's, leg that's real. When you see a life change, that's real. That is the real deal. And that's what we have. You know, we're created to be life changers. We are created for that. But it's finding out who you are in that. I've just got to be careful of the time because I get excited. Kelvin, I get excited over here. <laughs> How long have we got? How long have we got? Seven. seven. Yeah. God, sharp on that, man. All right, then I'll take seven. <laughs> right, okay. Right, cutting me, man. All right, okay. So, 
So, so with that charity, let me get back to that. With that charity, we use football to engage with the young people. We then recognise that Portsmouth had a problem. We heard an amazing stat that a number of young children were leaving junior school, going to secondary school, with the reading ages of six-year-olds. And one guy, I won't name him, but one guy said, that cannot happen on our watch. It, it, it shouldn't happen. In, in Portsmouth, that shouldn't happen anywhere in the world. That shouldn't happen. He said, that, will not, that shouldn't happen on our watch. What are we going to do? And I looked at him and said, I don't know. You, you, you know your idea. What are we going to do? And he said, I'm going to think about it. And he thought about it. And he thought about it. He asked a few questions. And you know what it came down to? Teachers are under so much pressure anyway. But the time that teachers are able to spend doing one-to-one -one reading, gone. Gone. Because their the life's just too busy. So he came up with an idea to get volunteers to go into schools and do one-to-one -one reading. Simple. Very simple. A lot of the volunteers were elderly, but they had that time. The kids' reading ages within a year went up four years. The relationship between the, the, the mentors, reading mentors and the children were amazing because all of a sudden, these reading mentors became grandparents, surrogate grandparents. So they were able to be a positive influence on these young people's lives. Now, I know the influence that those um, reading mentors had for those young people was so big it built confidence, it built trust, but above all, it built relationships. Because we all need relationship in some way. We can't be on our own doing what we do. But those young people needed somebody to follow, needed someone to guide. And it just comes back to that point, we're all role models, we're all leaders in some way. It's just taking that responsibility to be that leader. I'm in a position today, so I retired four and a half years ago from playing regular football. I knew that when football had come to an end, was coming to an end, I knew that there was something better for me to do. I knew it. Did I know what it was? No. Did I know that it'd be public speaking? That was the last thing I ever, ever, ever thought about. I'm not a natural public speaker. But one guy said to me again, you can do it. And my first public um, speech, speech, my testimony, was in this church, was in here. It was an interview style, nothing amazing. But I never thought that I'd be doing this regularly. So when I retired, I became ambassador with a football club for a couple of years, but I just felt a stirring within me to step out, to leave the comfort of what I knew. And it happened because I got made redundant by the football club anyway. So it happened, it was a natural out. And I took a step to do this public speaking. I took a step with my wife to, to contact schools, prisons, churches, to talk about my life, that actually my life, where I started, I had no right to be a professional footballer. I had no right to play in the Premier League. I had none of those rights. Everything was against me to become this person, apart from what was going on in here. And for seven years, it got squeezed. I was challenged and I struggled. But I was able to, to find a way through that so two years ago, public speaking regularly all over the country now, you know, different parts of the world, which has been amazing. It's been great. I've been challenged again. And I won't tell you, I won't give you details of how I've been challenged, but I know the next couple of years in my life are going to be so different. Am I nervous? Yes. Could I stay comfortable where I am? Yes. But you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. What have I got to lose? You know what, though? This morning, I realised the thing that holds me back, failure. 
I had a chat with somebody, a little bit of coaching, and he said, what are the things you, you know, make a list of all these things, you know, and I've done that. And I thought, I know he's going with it, so I'll play a little game, but he caught me out, so that didn't really work. But I knew where he was going, and he said, Lynn, why don't you just do it? Oh, I don't want to fail. And you know all I'd, all I'd done, where I thought I'd overcome so many things, all I'd done, I'd moved failure to a different place. I was confident where I was, but I'd moved failure to a different thing. So when this new project that I'm going to start to, well, I, what, what I'm involved with at this moment in time, I have to step out of my comfort zone. Could I fail? Dare I say yes. Will I fail? No. I won't fail. But I need to take that step. And I'll leave you with this, that every single one of us in here tonight, it's not coincidence why you're here. Don't think, you know, the invitation came in and you, you could have done a hundred different things, but you, you know, this sort of happened. You're here for a reason because you're in a place where you're challenged. You, you, you want to do something different. And I know life says, well, if you haven't got the security of this, if you haven't got that, it's not going to work. And believe me, I live in there. I live in there. But sometimes breaking free of that, and that's why I admire, I, I clap so hard when I cheer people that go through it. Because how long, how long, in, in all honesty, how long have you got to try something? How long have you got? No one knows. You know, why not try today? So I'll leave you with this. I made three amazing decisions in my life. The first, for me, the best decision ever was becoming a Christian. Changed my outlook to life completely. The second, getting married to my wife, Trish. Been together 23 years, been on an amazing journey. Has it been great every day? No. Has it been a challenge? Yes. But we're getting there. We are getting there. I don't know where the end is, but we're getting there. <laughs> And the third, the third amazing thing, decision I made was a tackle I made on Wayne Rooney. <laughs> so he, was running, he was running into the penalty box. I, I, I would relive it, but my jeans are too tight, so they might skip. <laughs> and he was just about to shoot and score, and I made a tackle. He fell over, jumped up for a penalty, and the referee didn't give a penalty. I thought that was a good decision. So, uh, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm sure Kelvin's going to come up and, and close. But guys, you know what? We've got challenges in our lives. We've got opportunities to do things. Just give it a go. Just give it a go. Thank you. Round of applause again for Dave Von Primus. Thank you so much, Lynn. It's an opportunity and a privilege to have you here. We, we can't thank you enough for being here. This is a lunch event. This is our first maiden event here. We're looking to do this every quarter this year. Uh, we hope that you'll be here again. We hope that you'll bring someone over the next time. Um, and you, we want to shock you, bringing people here who, young guys like, you know, like me, you know, long young guys here to come in and share their stories, young women, ladies with dreams, you know, who are doing stuff for themselves, who can show what they're doing, proof of what they're doing, that you can say, and I can say, and we can be challenged to do something with our lives. Thank you a lot of people for being here, thank you Thelcy, and um, Lloyd's Bank in here, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I was just going to round it up quickly. Um, just to let you know, we've got our sponsors here. And very quickly, I'd like to thank Bola Ninja Foodies for showing up here tonight. Can you just wait? Yeah. She's a young lady doing stuff, and she's doing a great thing here in the city of Portsmouth. If you're interested in Nigerian cuisines, uh, Bola is the person to talk to. And she's got a lovely dish there as well. After this is done, please, you know, visit there. And enjoy yourself. I'd also like to thank Ricky, Rick, I get into trouble for that, Rick and Elizabeth Masokotere, Global Health, what's the word? Global Health Partnership. 
I want to thank you guys. Can you just say, you know, big wave round to everybody? These are also young couples who are in business. And you're doing it real, real, real big. Rick, um, a good friend of mine, just gave up his job full time and said, you know what, I'm going into business and I'm doing it. I'm just going to put myself into it, do what I can do with it, and, you know, get, do the best out of it. And lovely, he's got a lovely wife there, you know, Elizabeth. And she, 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 she's put her head into it as well, she's supporting him. I mean, what, what better good is it to have a woman by your side that can help you uh, with your dreams and with your goals. And they're both running this together. If you need to talk to them, they'll be here as well. Have a chat with them and find out what's going on. Also, two blades in the house, two blades entertainment. I'd like to thank you guys for showing up. Is that the guys with the media? Is the guys with the cameras everywhere? Or are your pictures are safe with us? We're going out for young people here, Lynn. We're going out for young people here. We want, to, we want to bring them here every time we have a meeting here. We want to bring, I want you to be there. I want you to be there. This is a gentleman as well. I call him Epo. Okay. He's the CEO of Tap Up Mobile. Woo! Round of applause for that. And there's also a young guy here as well who's doing stuff. And he's doing a unique, a unique platform. You can reload your vouchers directly from his website at a cheaper rate. He's doing good stuff, trying to get out there. And this is just a young man who went to uni together, invested in Volkswagen. He's come out of it. Now he's doing business. He's doing stuff. So you can do it. You can do it. Tell C you can do it. I know that. Connor, you can do it. Joe, you can do it. Everybody, we can all do stuff here differently with our lives and challenge the people around us and say, look, I'm doing something with my life. What are you doing? What are you doing? I also want this opportunity to thank uh, Pastor Ayo and Sarah Fatima Shay for showing up here today. Really honored to have you I'd also like to thank uh, a brother of mine, Michael Owama, the host tonight. It was exceptional. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Right after this, there'll be music going on. There'll be food. Please mingle. Talk to people around here. If you've got a business card, share your business card. Reach out to people. As Lena said, everything, the same rule applies. Whatever profession you're in, the same rule applies. Fear, false evidence, appearing real. Always be there. It's how you overcome it that matters. And the same person, whatever you're doing in your life, this is an event that we would like you to be uh, here and again and again and again. Uh, we hope to do a lot more in the future. So thank you so much for coming, guys. I really appreciate your time. Can you just, you know, stand up? You know, whatever you do, just stand up. Stand up with your feet. Stand up, everybody. It's my dream. I gotta do it now. Stand up. I just want you to look about the next. Pressing close to you on the left and right, I just a handshake and say to them, your dreams are valid. Your dreams are valid. <laughs> also, very quickly, I'd like to thank Julad Catering Services uh, for the beautiful cake we have right there. She did a marvelous cake for us here. That's also a young lady. A round of applause for Julad Catering. I'm so I don't get into trouble tonight. Can you please give a round of applause for my wife, Victoria and Chimay for them? That's the woman's good to say. <laughs> Thank you, you can all sit down. Thank you very much for coming. Any questions, please feel free to have a chat with us. We'll be around here to talk to you about everything. Thank you.